We spent 25,000 bucks marketing private real estate investing on Facebook and Instagram, and it cost us about $40 per accredited lead, which was way lower than we had expected going into it. And also the cost of capital when we looked all the way through the funnel from the top to the bottom was lower than we expected and that we were told by experts. So if you're raising capital or looking to learn about new channels to acquire and welcome new investors, I encourage you to watch this video. I'm going to open up our CRM, our customer relationship management platform, and show you what worked for us. And then I'll give you what I do differently next time. If you have any questions as we go through this, please drop it in the comments below and I'll try and get back to you. Okay, so here's what we're going to cover. We'll go through our expectations going into the program. Then we'll cover off the tools and processes we use and how they all piece together. Then we'll go through the four key challenges we faced. Then we'll cover off the numbers going all the way through the funnel. Then we'll go through the scripts that worked for us and the ones that didn't. The audience insights, the cost of capital we got, and then lastly, three things we'll do differently if we're starting again for next time. So first up, expectations. If you're raising capital for real estate as a GP or fund manager, there's generally four main channels you can use. Organic, which is creating content and hoping people find you on Google. Social, might be posting on LinkedIn or Twitter or stuff like that. Paid or referrals. Now, this video is going to focus on the paid channel, which is meant to have a faster payback. You can put $25,000 into a channel and get leads immediately. Some of these other channels like organic or social referral do take time to build. Now, putting money into a channel immediately, we were told to expect about $500 per accredited lead. Now, if we had $25,000 to invest at $500 per accredited lead, that would be about 50 leads. Now, we saw other companies investing heavily on Facebook. Many of them were focusing on their brand, so not focusing on specific deals or investments, but really just building their brand. Or the second path was around deal focus. So when companies were doing five or six C offerings under like Reg D, where you can publicly advertise the deal specifically, we could see companies doing this. And speaking to experts, they told us to expect 300 to 600 bucks per accredited lead to start and to also put down a $100,000 minimum just to get going per month. That didn't really work for us. So we kept looking for other options, spoke to a bunch of firms, and then we found a firm that helped us get live and started. And their pitch was, here's how you can raise funds at a sub 3% cost of capital, which hit our pain point. So we decided to explore and ended up having an engagement with them. Next up on tools and processes. So we use HubSpot as our CRM, and that's really at the center of all our tools and technologies. We have email bundled into it. We have a website, which is powered by Webflow. We have paid programs that push leads into HubSpot. We have sales message, which is mounted on top of HubSpot and allows us to do phone calls and messages quite simply. And then data from our investors is then pushed into our investor portal. Now we were marketing not specific deals because we were doing five or six B offerings. Now under five or six C in regulation D, you can publicly advertise the actual offering, but you need to verify that investors are accredited by getting one of those letters. Now we were focused on advertising our firm or our brand. And then from there would actually speak to investors and, and work them through the funnel. And of course, take the steps to make sure that they were eligible to be investing in this stuff before. Now this is what our funnel would look like. So there'd be a lead form on Facebook or Instagram or what have you. Someone would fill out the lead, then it would get pushed directly into a HubSpot account, we had a bunch of automated workflows that would put them into a deal pipeline. And then from there would be working with that investor or prospect through the funnel. Now the vast majority as we'll see in a moment ended up in the, the nurture or not qualified, but this was actually how we built the process, which leads us to some of the challenges we faced. So the first one we actually faced was getting live with our account. We had the ads approved, you're ready to rock and roll, which was fantastic. And then probably about a week later, my account got restricted. Now that's my personal account, which was tied to the company account. Now this was super painful. We went through a bunch of back and forth and that I didn't have two-factor authentication enabled on my account. I didn't know I had to, but that ended up getting everything banned and paused for a bit. Very painful experience, but ended up getting it live and working. The second major challenge we faced was actually getting our messaging right. Now this is the iterations we sort of went through, but we focused on initially targeting 15% IRRs on premium properties. And that was really around our pitch and messaging of pre-vetted multifamily investments with growth markets, with great sponsors. We also looked at social proof. It was talking about some of the investors in our platform. Um, and also based on the feedback we got, actually iterated on the messaging a little bit. For example, we met a bunch of investors that were investing in single family homes or apartments and looking to make the jump to multifamily investing. Now for them, it was really about understanding the benefits and they're really attracted to the lower risk, bigger diversification, the ability to be truly passive. And that's where we led with some of our creative evolved into having a focus on larger multifamily properties. This worked quite well in attracting that audience. They're looking to make the jump from single family to multifamily investing. 
The third main challenge was managing the actual program. Now, as I mentioned, we used two key pieces of technology. First one was HubSpot as our CRM. Second one was sales message for calling and texting. And what would happen is someone would fill out a form on Facebook or IG, what have you, and their engagement would rapidly decline over time, which I'm sure you can imagine. So if we didn't get to them in the first few hours, let's say the first day or so, they would typically pretty much forget actually filling out that lead form. So what that means is if we tried to engage them after two days, they wouldn't even remember and they'd be trying to understand you know, who we are, why we're reaching out, those sorts of things. So time is definitely of the essence. Jumping to the actual numbers we saw through the funnel. So these are some of the things that actually came out at the end of the program. We got about a 40% accreditation rate. What that means is of the people that engaged with our ad and filled out the form, even though it said accredited investors only, only 40% of them were actually accredited. Now what that means is 60% of people were expressing interest in the ad that just weren't qualified. Now there is tools on Facebook you have around actually having people not submit the form if they click they're accredited. But when we looked at doing it that way versus letting everyone to fill it and then just doing it ourselves, it worked out better as a look through basis doing it the latter way. But there are ways you could get that 40% up to 100% and then deal with less noise, so to say, from people that aren't quite eligible just yet. Second key number to look at was $40 per accredited lead, which worked out quite well for us. Then there was the available liquidity, which we asked in the form, how much are you looking to invest? There's different brackets, which we'll see through in a moment. But the key bracket we saw from our experience was zero to 50,000 bucks. And then from the people we actually tried to call, we connected about 23% of them, which is lower than we expected, but aligned with industry benchmarks. So here's the accreditation rate over the, the period we were advertising. This is the cost per accredited lead, which is about $40 on average as you looked all the way through. This is the available liquidity, which is the chart I mentioned a moment ago. So we had different buckets of how much you're looking to invest. As you can see, roughly 60 to 75% of all prospects or investors that engage with our lead forms were looking to invest through zero to $50,000. Um, some of the investors that did go all the way through were in those higher buckets, uh, but it's important to understand the demographic and the audience that's gonna be interacting with this stuff. As far as connection rates, I mentioned we averaged about 20%. As the program went on and we figured out what times of day to reach out, what sequence of calls to actually implement, we were able to get that connection rate higher. But overall, we were connecting only with less than half of the people that actually were qualified and expressed their interest. Moving next to the script that we used. So we had 137 total conversations over the course of the program. And there were three scripts we went with. The first one was on the fly when we didn't even know we needed a script. We just thought we'd speak to people, understand what they're looking to do, tell them about us. That was the least successful. I wouldn't recommend that. I'm sure you have the script dialed in on your messaging, your brand, what you want to be saying to be most successful. The second script we worked with was Hunter Thompson's script, which is uh, available for Raise Masters members, a program I'd highly recommend. But this script's focused on really aligning the investor's why with your why and focused on really building that alignment and trust and before any talk about an offering or deals or those sorts of things. The last one was the closer script. And this one worked most successful with the more transactional people who were looking for answers quickly and of course didn't have time to spare. Now the closer script is by Alex Homozi. And it stands for C, being clarified where they're here. So understanding they're looking for passive income, capital growth, 1031 exchange, what have you. Um, labeling that. So if they're looking for passive income, and that's a problem they're trying to solve. Labeling that they're looking for passive income and having them agree into it. O stands for overview of past problems and opportunities. So what have you tried before with passive income? Perhaps they've been investing in apartments themselves and they're bogged down in the administration. Perhaps they've been burned by a bad syndication. Who knows? Um, S stands for sell, so transitioning to their opportunities into our offering and how we can help solve some of those challenges. E stands for explaining away the obstacles and R stands for reiterating. If they do become a successful investor, then talking around each step of that milestone, reiterating their decision to take that path. Moving to audience insights. So an investor's journey starts with being completely unaware about investing and how it works, to searching for solutions, to evaluating options, for being at the finish line, just looking for why information. Now we met investors all along this path and there was actually two dimensions that we like to think about it with. The first one was where I am on the stage. So if they're unaware about private real estate investments, perhaps they've just invested in stocks and bonds historically. Um, perhaps they have a single family home and they're looking for more real estate investments. Perhaps they're looking at a few platforms specifically, or perhaps they're looking to move from 1031 money. We'd meet people all across the journey around where they are. And it's important to match 
our messaging, our language, what we can do for them with where they are on that journey. The second dimension was actual engagement. We'd meet some people that are super warm and want to have conversations you know, longer than we would have available time for. And we'd meet people sometimes that were quite cold, very transactional, and wouldn't be the most pleasant to deal with. Now, examples of this stuff is sometimes people would just go to that complete a lead form and then just wouldn't reply back to any calls or emails or texts. The next type of persona we saw was with the busy and transactional people that were just wanting information, not wanting to talk, but really understand the key facts and figures without the story or the history behind it. Then we'd meet people that were interested, that would lean in and then bail and wouldn't hear from them. And then there was the engage where people would be interested, ready to move forward, looking to understand our offering, how it works, those sorts of things. And lastly, there were people that were absolutely delightful to work with. The people that even if they invested or didn't invest, still made it positive and a great human to human interaction. Moving next to the cost of capital. So the total cost of the program divided by the total capital raised was 3.2% for us. Importantly, you get these investors forever. So their name and contact information, if you had a conversation, we're able to learn a little bit more about them, their full complete profile is now yours forever in your CRM, unless obviously they ask for you to stop emailing them. But why that's important is these people still open our content and engage with our emails and those sorts of things. So what that means is that 3.2% is continually to trend down. As you can think about, we've got the big group of people and leads that we acquired on Facebook. And those people are now in our nurture campaigns. So as more of those invest or those existing investors invest more into our offerings, what that means is that 3.2% keeps going down. So what would we do differently? Well, there's three things. The first one is do it sooner. Here's a quote by Olga V, never stop testing and advertising will never stop improving. And we did just that over the course of the period, iterating on the messaging and how we delivered that was quite important and beneficial, not just in our script, but also in our overarching messaging for our fund. Second one was getting the brand right. So we did a few iterations of what works for us and ultimately ended up here, which is positioning our fund as a premium brand. Next was to properly resource it. So having five conversations at a 20% connect rate equals 25 calls. Now, if you take those 25 calls and say each one's gonna be 25 to 30 minutes on average, people we connect with, don't connect with, et cetera, it's about six to 12 hours. Now that might be a week, a quarter, a month, what have you. But the key thing is to recognize this, it's not on autopilot. You still need to put in the work, speak to people, build relationships, and hopefully welcome them into your business. Now to finish up, what would I do if I was a GP or fund manager looking to start my paid programs? Well, the first one is I get my brand and messaging on point. As I mentioned, we did a few iterations on it, but making sure you have a clearly aligned value proposition around why your firm, why your business, colors, pitches, all that sort of stuff. The second thing is to find the right partner. Now we looked at a ton of firms. Some were super professional, but super expensive. Some were scrappy, but really knew the business well. And some were just general paid advertising unaware of the intricacies of raising capital for real estate. So it's important to find the right partner if you're gonna be doing this. The third thing is to have the right infrastructure in place. We walk through all the tools and technologies we used around HubSpot and sales message and our website and stuff like that. Yeah. Getting that stuff buttoned up and aligned is really important. It'd be really difficult to do it just with an iPhone. Fourthly, I'll get the right person in place and focused on it, doing it daily dials. And the reason I say daily dials is if someone submitted that lead form on Monday, and you gave them a call on Wednesday or Thursday, more than likely they wouldn't know or remember who you are, your brand, or why they filled out that form. But if you can catch people in the first three hours or the first 24 hours, they're more likely to have that memory of remembering what that offering, what resonated with them, uh, and why they want to speak and learn about your company. And the last thing is test and iterate, like Olga B teaches us. You learn a ton just from the reps and sets from doing this, and all things, you go from a, a white belt to a brown belt to a black belt. And if you invest in this program and commit to months and quarters, I have no doubt that someone could build a very successful program doing exactly what we did. That's it. If you enjoy this content, please like and subscribe. We're going to be releasing a bunch of stuff around raising capital for real estate, marketing deals, and the different technologies that go into it. And if you know someone that is raising capital, I encourage you to share this video with them. They may find a new channel in paid advertising that can help them build a bigger business. All right. See ya.